Why do garden centers still sell invasive species in their stores? Well, it's a little bit of a complex issue, so let's break it down. Well, first of all, we need to look at what is the definition of an invasive species, or else all the rest of this conversation isn't really going to work. When it comes to invasive species of plants, we would define that as a plant that is not native to a specific region that could also replicate or reproduce itself in the wild and then become out of control, displacing your native species and causing ecological harm. So a couple of key points from that definition would be one, can that plant escape from either the nursery or the landscape where it's planted, make its way into a native wild environment? And secondly, if that plant does make it into a wild habitat, can it replicate itself or reproduce, therefore displacing native species that are currently living there? And there have been many such cases in the U.S. where someone has brought in some type of exotic plant from another location, whether that's a different part of the U.S. or a different continent, and then they have then made their way into the wild and displaced native species. So today we're focusing on plants that are in the nursery trade because, well, that's what we are and that's what we do. Let's take a closer look at one such species of plant that is listed as being invasive, but it's still commonly sold pretty much everywhere in the South. And that is the Nandina. If you were just to read about Nandina online, you would see it being listed as invasive and that it kills birds. And we're going to talk about both of those points. Now, the original straight species Nandina, which was brought over from Asia and used in ornamental landscaping, is Nandina domestica, also known as sacred bamboo or heavenly bamboo. Now, why was that Nandina brought to the U.S. in the first place? Well, it's because this plant is very beautiful. It's got really nice, colorful foliage. It makes pretty white flowers. It makes clusters of beautiful red berries and is very adaptable to the North American climate. Well, it's in those berries that the two main problems for Nandina domestica have arisen. First of all, if they do get eaten by birds, they do have viable seeds inside and birds could then take them and poop them out into our forested areas and they have been known to establish themselves in woodlands. And secondly is those berries actually have some type of cyanide in them as well and that has been known to actually kill birds. So you'll see a million headlines about Nandinas having killed birds. Now in my research, the main bird that is affected by this is the cedar waxwing, which is a bird that's known to gorge itself on berries and frequently get drunk on berries or sometimes even die from eating too much at once. From what I could find in my research, there have only ever been two documented cases of cedar waxwings actually being killed by Nandina berries. And we're talking about all of North America, which there's millions of these Nandinas planted and there are millions and millions of cedar waxwings in North America. So let's go ahead and get to the good part of this video and that is the solution. First of all is the plant breeders quickly found out about the problems of the straight species Nandina and its tendencies to go wild in North America. And so what they did is they started selectively breeding this plant for having better landscape performance, different color, different sizes, and most of all for sterility. So the newer varieties of Nandina that are on the market are much improved from the old heavenly bamboo variety. First of all, they're going to be more compact in the landscape. They're going to have a lot of different color options such as lemon lime or the blush, which has a rich burgundy color in the winter. But more importantly, they're sterile and they've been proven to sterile because a lot of these new varieties have been around now for decades. And so they either don't flower at all, or if they do flower, they're not going to develop a fruit that has a viable seed in it. Which means they no longer fit into that definition of being an invasive plant. So when you see the comments online on the videos that invariably show up when we talk about Nandinas that say, that plant's invasive. Well, Actually, it's not, unless it is that old species specific of the Nandina domestica. And even if you do have the old Nandina domestica, which is still in many, many households all across the southern United States, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to dig it out and remove it. One is it might not be invasive in your specific region. For example, here in North Texas, we don't see Nandina domestica just escape and get into the woodlands and take over like we do some other species. But if you are concerned that it potentially could be ingested by birds and either hurt the birds or spread into the wild, a simple solution would just be to each year go on and clip off the berry clusters, which would only take a couple of minutes per year. 
or just buy one of the newer cultivars that doesn't make those berries. Now this same pattern has happened many times throughout North America where a plant has been brought over, it's been problematic, and then the plant breeders have fixed it. So things like privet and barberry and butterfly bush, which have previously been invasive in some areas, now all have sterile cultivars that are very well behaved in the landscape. It's just really confusing, especially to newer gardeners. Whenever they go online and they read about a certain plant, it pops up as being invasive online. And then you go to your local garden center and you see that same plant there. And that's why it's really important for you to check with your local garden centers and your local experts and ask their opinions about these plants and how they do in your region or if they've ever seen them be problematic in your region. Now there is a lot more to talk about on this subject of exotics and invasives versus natives. And so let me know what other questions you might have down in the comments and we'll cover that in future videos.